an exciting thing has just happened. And it's actually happening right now. What? We're having the Council of Parents. And I want to introduce to you Ken Craig. Hello. And Emily Campbell. Hello. And we are here for not just the Council of Moms, the Council of Parents. Yeah. I, it is such an honor to be here on the Council of Parents. I well, think if we called it Council of Moms, Ken would be cool with that too. I'm fine with that too. Yeah. <laughs> because then I feel like I'm, I don't know, undercover. I, oh, <laughs> you're in the club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Life gets easier if we figure it out together. Welcome to The Lisa Show. I'm always interested in having a conversation that is about stuff that we are all dealing with. It's not a gender issue, right? And so for this topic particularly, we really need to share ideas, but also just commiserate to each other. And what I'm talking about is home organization. (laughs) Uh, Yes. A beautiful time in that there are many sources of inspiration for what home organization could be. I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, it was like a plastic tub and you could maybe rustle around and find a granola bar and some microwave popcorn. I don't even remember any plastic tubs (laughs) growing up. So, Ken, how do you organize your home? Um, Not well. (laughs) (laughs) My wife, Katie, is she has the brain for it, for organizing. So I'd say our biggest success is the bins with labels. Yeah. But these are bins that are also not like your junk drawers, you know, where the thing kind of in the kitchen or in the den that just sort of end up with scissors and mints and whatever, (laughs) you know. So it's things that are very specific, you know, that are united. They belong together, decorations or whatever, and they're labeled and well-labeled. So it's like, I know where it is and I can I can pull it out. That's our greatest success story. Our greatest failure is me. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. And this is with <laughs> um, digital clutter. Like, for example, I have all these DVDs and CDs mm-hmm. that I have digitized and even home movies that were on VHS that That's I a big deal. that I put onto DVDs and are now digitized, okay. but I still have the DVDs and the yeah. CDs. Yeah, and you can't get rid of them. No, that's a hard one. That is hard for me. I mean, uh, I understand that a little bit. I relate to that a little bit. As a photographer, like when I started shooting a ton of jobs in the you know late '90s, early 2000s, all on film, I had to find a way to like organize all those things, mm-hmm. and I still have all those things. But I didn't even think about that. When we started bringing up home organization, I didn't think about all the things that are digitized now that I could get rid of. Yeah. And my husband's slightly a hoarder, yeah. and he's the same way. He has boxes and boxes of DVDs, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. still have our whole CD collection. And what are we going to do with yeah. those? Well, you take them out and you hold them because isn't there something magical <laughs> about the out. pictures? And you and cradle them you know what? in your poem. What if, You're not what if to we them, but... keep the inserts <laughs> right? They're and then all... chuck everything else? You are on the yes. I think that's a I total, that. that's a reasonable like compromise, right? Yeah. Back in the old days, I got one of those albums yeah. that just for the CDs. And the, and, and the cover. And the co- or the yeah. insert. The yeah. insert. And so I have this two yeah. leather huge, you can barely zip it. You know, CDs, I can't get rid of those. That's a great way Even to Even though keep I those. have access to all of that music on Spotify. I know. That's the thing is I'm like, why do we hang on to these? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you organize your home, Emily? How we live at our house is probably a little bit different than most people. And I'm really a stickler for easy access for mm-hmm. all the most important things that we need. Like, so that's your overarching like that's philosophy. Brilliant. Yes. And I like and, that. and I will tell you why. It's because I have three children, one who's like borderline an adult now, so she kind of takes care of her own things in a way. But my other two boys are very high maintenance. Our 15-year-old is, you know, severely disabled and he he doesn't do any self-care at all. Like he doesn't dress himself, brush his teeth, anything. He's diapered, nonverbal, autism, epilepsy, all the things. Um, and then we have a six-year-old who still needs a lot of help and, you know, but he can run upstairs to his room and pick out his clothes and get himself dressed. So that's great. We think he's like a genius because he can dress <laughs> himself, right? And so at our house, it took me a while to kind of be okay with this because in my mind, I want my home very organized. I want 
clutter-free. I'm kind of a minimalist about our home, although we do have a lot of artwork on the walls, but we've kind of had to keep a lot of things we never planned on keeping because our 15-year-old is like a giant toddler, you know? So for us, organizing just his items has been a challenge. Like he needs two pairs of clothes every day. He goes through more clothes than anybody else. Um, He's got medical supplies, diaper supplies. He even has his own bed in our bedroom because he has seizures all night long. And, And I realized maybe it's not totally unique to having a disabled child. I can remember when we were a younger, newly parents couple, some of our friends that lived in New York City, they had small kids too in these tiny, tiny apartments. And so some of the things they were doing then are things we're doing now, even though we have the space in our house, but we need the access. For instance, all of our son Connor's clothes are in our bedroom. Oh. And so I've got a under the bed bin for all of his pants and shorts and another under the bed bin for all of his shirts, Right. That way, I'm not running up the stairs to the dresser area, you know, where his stuff would be. It's easy access and it's fast. And so I'm like, you know, this isn't really set up how I would like my master bedroom, my (laughs) space of serenity to be. (laughs) But it works really well and everything's out of sight, but totally accessible. And we have to have that, you know. Of course, it's not ideal, but it's working. It works great. I think that accessibility is huge because yeah. it's not only easy to get out, but easy to put away, right? Yes, Especially it's, if it's very out easy of you, to put away. It's like, so. something soothing, though, about having everything organized yeah. in, in its right place, and like I psychologically. see everything yeah. and yeah. not dig for stuff. When I say we need to be fast to get him ready, I mean it. Because if I have to run upstairs and get things for him, he'll walk out the door naked. You know, like he won't care. Yeah, and so away. I got to have, have everything problem. within reach. <laughs> Your kids You're bringing too, huh? me back to like <laughs> when I was taking care of Chris, yeah. my late husband, mm-hmm. and he had a ton of Things medical in yeah. equipment oh, yeah, in our yeah. bedroom. Mm-hmm. And I would want to have, I had a little bin mm-hmm. where I had all of the feeding bags yep. for the feeding tubes and yep. I had extra saline solution and, and I would stock it and it would help my brain like calm down of like, okay, everything's like right. where it needs to be. Right. So if there's an emergency in the middle of the night or everything is there and I can see it. Although you're right, it didn't like make my It didn't help look my feng shui at all. Or right? like, yeah. Your retreat like, from the world. <laughs> exactly. yeah. right. That's more like the world came in. But, we don't really have but that. Yeah. Mom has yeah. to serve the family yeah. that is living there. And I think just in general, sometimes as parents, we have to kind of let that go, right? Like your house is not going to look beautiful in like a magazine cover while you have kids at home. It's, it's just look not like going it to. Yeah. Whether you have a disability situation or not. That reminds me of one oh, other yeah. thing. At our house, we're super lucky to have a great mudroom. Every pair of shoes that everybody owns lives in the mudroom. So there's from floor to ceiling, a couple stacks of shoe racks, and there's like 100 pairs of shoes in there. I love Instead that. of all over your house. Uh-huh. I, I have a problem with shoes. Yeah. I really do. Because I have a place, mm-hmm. a shoe rack in the closet that my children never use. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, hey, can you put your shoes on the shoe rack? <laughs> and now it goes from, we have a shoe rack? could you please put your shoes on the shoe rack? Yeah. And they're like, wait, what? <laughs> on the shoe rack where the shoes belong. Not, you know, like not, I get not really to, like, Not a case of those. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't do it. They yeah. put it next to, right. in front of it, to the side, or right in, in front of the doorway. Yeah, right that in happens of- in our mudroom a ton. <laughs> like I walk in and there's three pairs of shoes exactly where I'm about to step. And I'm like, dudes, there's a shoe rack that goes to the ceiling. So you may have yeah. this great system yeah. or organization. Because I agree, you should have a place for everything mm-hmm. so that it's like easy and you don't, it's a waste of time looking for it. It kind of yeah. calms your brain and stuff like that. But if you can't get everybody else on board, then what is the use? Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. I don't want to waste one minute hunting for shoes in the house, oh. man. I just, it's too hard. <laughs> so how do you adjust when you feel like a system although brilliantly Mm -hmm. laid out, is not executing well. It's got to be trial and error, right? Like, I know for us, any horizontal surface in the house is danger zone (laughs) because it's just going to get— It's a clutter trap. Yes. Stuff just just piled up. Go to the kitchen table and just like— is this just me? Put to Get your arm and just swoop it, everything mm-hmm. off of it. Papers, mm-hmm. books, shoes, backpacks, jackets, and just 
watch them fall on the ground, which yeah. is me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's sort of it's rewarding, right? <laughs> We've had that before where so our kitchen table, it's kind of out in the main area. So it becomes the craft table mm-hmm. and everything else. And there'll be several nights in a row where we're eating dinner in the kitchen around the island because (laughs) there's, yeah, it can't get to the table. We end up using half of our table because the other half is like someone's project, you know. Yeah. I try to be so cool and chill for like five (laughs) minutes and that's as long as it lasts. My my son puts his backpack on the kitchen table Mm. in the middle of our house every day after school. (laughs) And I have asked him nicely like, I really have asked him nicely. I do want this <laughs> on the that. record. I believe you of, too. Hey, please don't put your backpack on the kitchen table. You know, we're going to use it for dinner or whatever. Just put it on the shelf in the front closet right by the door. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. And then after like the 63rd time that I've oh said, gosh. hey, don't do this. And if there's some <laughs> slight hesitance in my voice, it's like, okay, geez, like, calm down, mom. And I'm like, yeah, you calm down. Why are yeah. you yelling at yeah. me? Like, exactly. Like, don't put your backpack here. Put it in the closet. Yeah. It's usually what it sounds like. I will uh, cut a fool. But Seriously. I think you walk in, it's right there. But sometimes our home organization while it makes a lot of sense to us, doesn't make no. sense to the other people living in the house. And so all we can fails. do is just yeah. the exact same thing. Like, yeah. okay, uh, y'all need to put your backpacks and shoes away because we're going to use this area now, you know. True story came to me yesterday and said, <laughs> I can't find my backpack. No. <laughs> oh, was and it I where s- it's supposed to be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yep. I said, without trying to like laugh or cry, I said, have you checked the front closet on the shelf? You know, just where, where it been belongs. Him, like, yeah. to do for, yeah. Again, 63 times. <laughs> and then he's like, found it. Oh, my gosh. I can't I believe did it. that. I found it. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Are you inspired by <laughs> social media or other people's like really well organized or beautifully organized mm-hmm. homes? Are you inspired by that or are you annoyed by a, it? A little envious, yeah, yeah. If, if it's true. If yeah. what they're demonstrating Go on. Actually, Mostly I'm bugged. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like you said, Lisa, there's so many theories and, and practical applications of home organization and some of it just won't fly either because of the people in your home, if you have kids or younger kids or if it's just not your nature. So I think it is a little bit of trial and error. Like, oh, this is working. I mean, and sometimes it's the simplest solution, right? We have tons of games, right? We have Mm -hmm. a lot of kids. We have eight kids. And even the younger ones, we'll have like a lot of dress-ups, Oh, yeah. I don't have a lot of athletic equipment in my home, but I have a <laughs> lot of dress-ups. <laughs> <laughs> and so we finally found these shelves with huge pull-out bins, and everything fits in them. And my gosh, it works. Yeah. Where for years That's it awesome. was like, hey, don't forget we got to put these in these boxes, and they go in places you can't reach and whatever. And so to make it easier has just been a game changer. I don't know if anyone's selling that theory or that idea, but I'm like, this is so basic and yet it works so well for us. I feel like that's something that exists now that we didn't really have when we were all little. Like in the 80s, I don't remember there being pieces of furniture that looked great, right. but that were totally for like kid storage You're stuff. So right. And now yeah. that's everywhere and it's great. And I will use pieces of furniture in our house for things they're not intended for all the time. We have this beautiful black wood hutch that we used to have in our bedroom for a TV back when TVs were small and square. <laughs> so we don't <laughs> use this hutch anymore for the like entertainment thing. So I have it in the living room and there's drawers in the bottom and a space in the top. And now it's all toys in the drawers. Yeah. And the whole the hutch part with the cabinets that open is all all art supplies and coloring books and markers and all these things. And I'm like, this is great. It's totally easy access for my six-year-old and I can just shut those doors and it's all there. Yeah. But like, we didn't have anything like that when I was little. I don't remember that either. Yeah. yeah. And like what you were asking about seeing the social media or whatever, people posting their organizations. I feel like every once in a while I'll see something and I'll be like, oh, that's a great idea. I want to try that, you know. But for the most part, I default to that will never work for my family. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) That won't work with eight kids or that won't work with a special kid. I was influenced and got those clear cereal Mm -hmm. containers Mm -hmm. because I love cereal, Uh but I don't eat it fast enough for it not to go stale. Right, right. So... 
I do get a little bit of a high, a little ping, a little ping in your brain. <laughs> when I dopamine come home, hit. Yep. <laughs> dopamine hit. When I come home from the grocery store and empty out like a yeah. regular cardboard bag or right. just like one of the big bags, like right. a bulk, yeah. and put it into the cereal <laughs> container, and, and, the, and then you like, and I'm organized. Make it go, yeah. You know, you <laughs> hear, yeah. you hear the click, <laughs> and does it and, stay fresh? And, I, and then I go, and it does. Yay. And then it looks pretty when I yeah. open up the drawer. Yeah. And so I do like that's that, but that's one thing. Now, do I want all of my drawers to look like that? Yeah. I do know, they? I wish. No, no practically. Yeah. I can't. You know, you reminded me of when my parents, they had five kids and they got lockers. And oh, I remember cool. my dad saying, Put your stuff in your locker. I love like that. As, you know, like you can have your favorite <laughs> things or whatever. I just don't want to look at it. Right. And then we would shut the locker. And I just remember think like there was nothing out of the ordinary about that. And it's just dawning on me in this morning. Yeah, I guess everyone didn't grow up with lockers. <laughs> but people have those now. I see all the time people's super fancy mudrooms that see, have lockers. Ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah. All, you know what? You know what does motivate me to, you know, get my stuff all thrown out? Yeah. <laughs> Watching hoarders. Oh. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Nothing motivates me to clean up and if purge. If you're having a hard time. Like watching that, yep. Commercial break. Mm -hmm. Boy, you'll scrub a toilet. Oh, yeah. Heck yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go clean the litter box before my whole house gets overtaken yeah. by Everyone's cat Everyone's informed smells. by a different, like, I think how you were raised is like sort of your baseline for how you see, like, not only like cleanliness, but home organization, right? Like, mm -hmm. like where everything should have its place right. and then put it away and stuff. Like I always joke, my parents don't like it when I joke about this, but um, <laughs> so I'll tell it. <laughs> uh, like I remember very clearly, like this happened more than once where I'd be like studying, right? Like in the living room and I have my like book out, my notes and stuff like that. And then I would like go to the bathroom or I'd go to the kitchen to get a drink of water and I'd come back and it would be gone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I'd be classic. like, who moved my stuff? Yeah. And I would think it was a sibling and it was like my dad would just be like, you can't leave your stuff out. <laughs> um, don't your, your dad life. and my dad are the same person. <laughs> we still joke about that to this day. Like if you're not finished with your plate or you're working on a sewing project or whatever, dad's going to put it away. Yeah. I realize that I resist that urge to do yeah. that to my own kids yeah. now. And sometimes I don't resist the urge. I know. Yeah. I know. When we were going through a really intense time and Chris was really sick and things like that, my mom and dad are so great at home organization, right? And they're so <laughs> great at like being helpful. And so my mom would come and pick up our, she's like, let me help you with the laundry. You know, you got five kids at home mm -hmm. and you're caring for your handicapped husband. Like, And it was one of those things where like, you know, sometimes it's just easier to do it yourself, but I was so desperate. I was like, yes, help me organize this. So she did it and my <laughs> dad would help. And I felt so validated. It's like this moment where you understand your parents and they understand you in a new way. My dad was like, why don't your kids put their laundry away <laughs> like correctly? Why don't they hang up their shirts? Why don't they fold? Like all the things mm -hmm. that you're asking yourself every day. And I remember I looked at him and I said, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't they? Don't they know that this, is, you know, mm -hmm. saves them time and will help and, da -da -da and it looks better and it'll keep them cleaner. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. That's all your you points are yes. valid. Yes. <laughs> so he printed out. <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> this page that said, Dear grandchildren, please hang up your clothes I and take it. care of your things. <laughs> like this plea from love your grandfather. Like oh, printed in it. bolt and taped it to each of oh, their oh. closet th things. And my kids were like, this is weird. And I was like, <laughs> not weird. Not it's, weird. You know, oh. it does take a village <laughs> to keep <know>. things <laughs> I think that's going. sweet. Have you ever, like you've, tidied, you've organized, and you're like, this isn't going to last half oh, yeah. a day. Like the system is And it doesn't last half a minute at my house, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not kidding. And we think that <laughs> if we just have the right system, if it's organized, mm -hmm. it'll just run itself. No, not true. The it's just too many no. variables. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. the small wins. It's the cereal. Yeah. Or it's the, Everything the decorative reach. furniture that is actually yes. storage. Or yes. The, yeah, or the accessibility and having uh -huh. it in reach. It's the small wins that you're like, well, this is working. Yes. So I will. So success. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the win. Every time I thought about this podcast, I would say to my producer, McKay, I have got to talk to my sister, Gina, about this because she is obsessed with home organization. She's the best at it, and we talk about it a lot. So I had to get Gina on board. 
Gina, do you remember when I moved into my house and you were helping me unpack, but then you were like criticizing where I was putting things away. You were like, why would you put that there? And I looked at you because I had a little baby and two toddlers at the time. And I was like, I'm just trying to put stuff away so people don't get into things. And you were like, listen, I don't want to be rude, but can I just do it? Because I promise I will organize your kitchen in the way it should be and it will make your life easier. You made me that promise, Gina. (laughs) It was very dramatic. And in exasperation, I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. And you organized my kitchen in the right way. So my question is, how did you know? (laughs) That's really funny. I think because you have a creative mind, (laughs) shall we say. (laughs) Oh, great. Maybe you don't consider function as much as someone who maybe thinks a little more linearly and less spirally cloudy like you oh, do. Oh, I have a spirally <laughs> cloudy, spirally mind. cloudy mind. Thank you. I will take that as a compliment. So teach me your ways. So when I organize, I try to put things arranged, in, in particular in kitchens, by where you're going to be using them. And so by the oven where I will be baking, I'll put mixing bowls, measuring cups, things like that, like close by. I try to corral all the small kitchen appliances in one space just so that I know where they are. Plus, I don't know if you have this problem. The toaster leaks crumbs. Toasters leak crumbs wherever you go. And here is my big tip for anyone (laughs) who is so sick of the toaster crumbs. I put my toaster in my cabinet on a tray, like on a little plastic tray I bought for like a buck at a dollar store or something so that it's not leaving crumbs all over the inside of my cabinet. And so if I want to clean it, <laughs> then I just take out the tray. I'm, I'm trying. And, sorry, really, really I'm probably a... getting too, no, too detailed. You're the right person to ask to come and talk about home organization because you think of things that I would never think of. Well, and here's another thing. Okay. You know, you're, <laughs> so like your butt pan and your angel food cake pan. I don't know if people have those. I have them, Some but I never do. use them. <laughs> right. So put them so far away that... You forget you have them? You forget. <laughs> <laughs> Great tip. No, no. So here's the deal. Okay. Put them away yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. they're not in the way of you getting out your cookie sheets or whatever every day that you use. Yeah, not every day. I don't use a cookie sheet every day. But if you're a baker or a cooker, you know, if you make meals for your family, make it convenient so that you don't not want to do it. <laughs> the stuff that you use the most, have that the most readily available. Yes. Okay. But back to your point about not using an angel food cake pan or a bunt pan or something, which are very specific pans. Like I have a cheesecake pan I probably haven't used. I haven't made cheesecake for probably over five years. I'll take your cheesecake pan then because I love making cheesecake. But see, on the off chance that I do <laughs> make a cheesecake, see? I have a pan and it's <laughs> it's neatly nestled with my angel food cake pan and my bunt pans. Listen, I will trade you <laughs> my angel food cake pan, which I don't think I've ever used. Well, I don't need one because I have one. <laughs> Dang it. But if you haven't used it, get rid of it. Yeah, you're, I mean, that's that a good makes, point. And we've Let's talked to organize. We've talked ad nauseum offline <laughs> because it's yeah. a very fun topic about getting rid of the clutter. So, like, especially in your kitchen and when you're trying to organize bathroom towels or laundry rooms, if there are things in there that you don't use, like extra. Vases. I mean, how many vases do you really need? I have an entire shelf in my garage of I've extra seen it. vases. Yes. And I was just thinking about getting rid of them, but then I was like, but wait. No. What if I need it? <laughs> Here's when you need it. Yeah. When you take flowers to a friend, yeah. don't just take them the bouquet wrapped in the plastic from the store, put it in one of your vases that you don't want anymore, that you would donate anyway, and then say, I don't need this face back. Here you go. Yeah. You know? Because a lot of times people will return the vases and you're like, no, I don't. You're right though, because a lot of times when we talk about home organization, we get boggled down by like our thing that we collect or that we're saving for some future reason and I don't know why. And we have this sort of attitude of like, as soon as I get rid of it, I'm going to need it. Like those mason jars, even though I don't can, if I get rid of those mason jars, I'm going to need something to store in that. 
Yes, that is true. But I feel like the emotional weight yeah. of carrying those extra items is worth the price of buying new ones if you actually do need it. Okay, that's a good point. So I want to finish up in the kitchen. What are some other home organization tips before we move to another room like that it's kitchen specific that you could offer? So one of my big kitchen tips is within your utensils drawer and not your silverware, okay. but like where you have wooden spoons and spatulas whisks and spatulas and, and all those things. Again, I don't like them out on the counter. So a lot of people put them in a little crock or something up on top of the counter and it looks cute. I don't do that. I put them in a drawer. Mm -hmm. But my mother-in-law came over one time and was watching the kids and switched it around. She laid them horizontally or so perpendicular to how the drawer opens. Yeah. And it works so much better than oh. putting them, you know, lengthwise so that the handles are toward you. She put mm -hmm. the handles sideways. For some reason, that worked really, really well. But within that drawer, I have a tiny basket and they just float free in that drawer. It's chaos. It's chaos. I don't That's care. That's where you let loose. Yeah. In your kitchen <laughs> drawers. <laughs> it's really crazy. But... I do have small things like measuring spoons, and I have a zester, like a single-handed single, single -handed zester that is my favorite thing ever. It's the best. But little tiny things like yeah. that, or I have some little tiny baby spatulas that mm -hmm. are so cute. And you put them in a smaller basket. Okay. Just contain the small things, and then they don't get so lost. So that's that's one tip. And another tip I have is to separate out your linens that you need. So like I have hand towels that are really, really absorbent that go in the bottom drawer with my rags that I wipe everything up with. But then I have like dish drying towels in a different one. It just keeps it organized so that you're not just going through where placemats and dish towels and washcloths are all in the same drawer. I don't know. I find that helpful too. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so moving on to like the bathroom, bathroom storage it can be awful so what can we do to make it a little bit less? Well, the biggest thing with bathrooms is you want to keep them clean, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want a clean bathroom. So one of the tips is to keep cleaning supplies for each bathroom under the sink in the bathroom or wherever you have hopefully space somewhere in the bathroom. So I have just the cleaning wipes, you know, sanitizing wipes, some toilet bowl cleaner at the very minimum. You know, mm -hmm. and then a toilet brush at the very minimum. But maybe some window cleaner, some glass cleaner, and some extra rags in the main bathrooms, like a scrubber. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to go searching for it when you're like, this is bathroom's disgusting. Once you have the thought, you can just go spray it down or wipe it down and say, okay, yeah. as soon as I have the thought, I can just do it. It will take me less than five minutes. Yeah. Well, and another thing with bathrooms is, so the two main things is you want it clean and you don't want to run out of toilet paper yes. <laughs> or soap, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So just keep it stocked as best you can. If I go get a large pack of toilet paper or, you know, even a small pack, you can just distribute the rolls that right when you get it. It just keeps it easy. Yeah, instead of storing it in the garage or storing yep. it in the basement or storing it somewhere else and having to go get it, it saves time while you're organizing. And how many times have you heard one of your kids screaming <laughs> bloody murder Too many times. From a bathroom going, I need toilet paper. And then the other one's shouting, get it yourself. Anyway, yeah. you don't want that scenario. No. <laughs> so try to avoid that scenario. And to make it easy and simple for them to clean the bathrooms. Because I don't want to clean all the bathrooms. I don't even want to clean one bathroom. <laughs> no, we don't want to do any of that. You know, home organization, I think some people say, I'm either good at it or I'm not. And that's just it. And I do think that there are like a few like simple things that you can do just even just to set up your house that will save you time and, and a little bit of headache. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think a lot of people get overwhelmed. I know I have at once, you know, you see these beautiful clear bins where you decant your flour and your sugar and your oatmeal and your And your now beans. do you see that people are doing that with their laundry rooms now too? Now they're doing like big glass open cases where they'll put all their like Tide Pods in or their refresher beads in another one, and then they have to mark. Like, no, now our what? laundry no. rooms have to look like showrooms again. 
All I'm saying is, is that the pressure for home organization is super, super high now. And I kind of want to just say, no, 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 no. It's just about making your life easier, not making it look perfect. If it serves you, great. If it stresses you, not great. <laughs> like just separate it out because maybe to someone that is important, maybe their laundry room. Listen, I want it. Maybe everybody... Don't get me wrong. I just can't maintain it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a pass through or, <laughs> you know, for a laundry room or something. For me, that's where all the winter coats go. That's where play equipment goes in the top shelf. I mean, I use every square inch of my laundry room because it's so small. You know, we have hooks everywhere and open shelves in front of a window because that's the only space I had, you know? I mean, yeah. And so you just do the best you can with what you have. And it has to serve, it has to serve your you. needs, yeah. not a Pinterest need. <laughs> no, no. Because how many people are going to be coming in looking into your pantry? And you know who's coming in looking into your pantry? It's your son's like 11-year-old friends. And guess what? They don't care what yeah. your pantry looks like. They just want to know if there's fruit roll-ups. Exactly. And in my house, I'm sorry, there's not. They're gross. I don't do fruit roll-ups. That's a treat wow. for someone else's house. But I will have like crackers. <laughs> everybody. Hey, everybody, everybody. Let's go over to Gina's house. Get some She's crackers. Got crackers. <laughs> Goldfish? Well, I don't know. Well played. Yeah. What is something that you think that we miss when we talk about home organization? Okay. You know where things get really bent out of shape? Where? Really quickly. Where? In your closets. Like oh, yeah. t-shirts and jeans. Stacking t-shirts and jeans. And I think Do you the, stack or do you roll? I stack. Oh. Well, I don't know. Some people, I, I don't know. I, listen, I, I've done a lot of research for this episode. And I got to say that I might rethink my stacking and start to roll. Even jeans? You roll jeans? Especially jeans, they say. Well, but I think it depends on where you're putting them. If you're putting them in a drawer then I think rolling would probably be great. Because then you could see them Because then you could see them. But if you do them on a shelf, you'd want to stack. Because otherwise, you've got like a little (laughs) fire. (laughs) Like, you know, like... It looks like a fireplace. It looks like a fireplace. You've got your stacks of jeans. And yeah, I think it depends on where you're putting it. Well, see, and t-shirts, it also depends on how you fold them because where lines and creases go... But it t- I just don't want to worry about it. And I think most people don't. You know, it's hard enough to wash, dry, fold your laundry, and then put it away. Yeah. Well, and that's something that I've started to do is I immediately fold after every load that's dry. That's hard. It's hard. But, you know, I just try to keep on top of it because it's so much easier than dumping it all on the floor or in a bed and then folding it all at once. If you do just a little bit at a time, it actually is great. And then I sort it as I fold it with all the people in my house. And even when I'm putting it away, I'll kind of sort it because like I said, I stack t-shirts. So my husband, he just wears t-shirts. He works from home. He doesn't have to wear pants t-shirts or anything. And so I'll just stack all of his t-shirts up, but they might be in different loads of laundry, if that makes sense. And so by color, because I do laundry by color. So I think I think it depends on where that's coming from. Okay, so you have lived in lots of different places. You've moved before. You've set up houses. You've helped me set up my house. What's a really great home organization takeaway that people who are like, okay, I am excited about this and I just want to do like one or two things to get the ball rolling to just to be a little bit more organized. What would you suggest? So one of my favorite quotes is from William Morris. And he said, have nothing in your houses that you do not know to be beautiful or believe to be useful. So I really think home organization begins when you bring things into your house. Oh, Because it really starts when you're taking care of the things that you've brought into your house. Yeah. And you'll take better care of them. You'll want to organize them, put them in a useful way If you like them. (laughs) Yeah, and it makes you happy when you see them. Everyone makes fun of the Marie Kondo if it sparks joy. Yeah. But that actually has turned out to be a fairly good meter for, I mean, basically what William Morris said decades ago. And so if you have those things in your home that are either useful or beautiful, then you'll find a way to make them more convenient to use in your home organization system. Well said. Do you want to help me reorganize my laundry room? Yeah, your laundry room needs a total gut. I know. Yeah. It's real bad. 
<laughs> okay, so some of us need some help on this, right? We're all on different levels. And there is such a thing as a professional organizer. So I've invited Ashley Stewart, friend of the Lisa Show, on to tell us about what she does. Okay, so Ashley, I love being organized. Some people don't. So is this nature or nurture? Oh my gosh. Okay, that's a fabulous question because <laughs> it's a mix of both, but mostly it's nurture. So I was the messy kid growing up. I was the one that had clothes all over the floor. I couldn't find anything. You know, it was this constant nagging to pick up after myself. But my mom was a very organized person. And without even realizing what she was doing, she was teaching me the method of how to get organized. And so... I mean, we all have one of those stories where we just kind of hit rock bottom. And I had those about uh, 12, 10, 12 years into my marriage. Within four years, we went through every single transition known to man between deaths and births and losing jobs, moving across the country, being homeless for a while. I mean, you oh name word. it, we went through it. Plus diagnosing all three of my children with neurodiversities and overcoming some PTSD. I mean, there was every single thing that you could think oh, wow. of. That's a lot. And you hit rock bottom and you look around your house and you go, how did I get here? Being organized is more than just the physical space. It's the mental space as well. So the nurture, how am I going to get myself out of this? Oh yeah, my mom taught me how to do this. It's just this mindless, just do this. And then the next step and then the next step. And by healing my physical space, I was able to heal my mental space and intertwine the both of them into understanding how to be completely organized, not just physically, but also mentally, emotionally, how they all tie in together and how you can do both at the same time. And it's <laughs> wonderful when you can actually realize how that works. I can just imagine a bunch of parents listening across the country thinking of their favorite messy kid and thinking, mm -hmm. oh, the, so there's hope. <laughs> or thinking just because they're messy in high school or in college, like these sorts of principles, like maybe they'll remember and not be like that in the yes. future. It's just, Don't just, give up on that. <laughs> well, it is so generous of you to be able to say, this is a mental and a physical connection for me when I hit rock bottom. And I don't yes. think that people, when they're looking at beautiful containers on Amazon and pinning different organizational strategies... So I didn't expect you to just say, oh, no, no, no. This came at the worst time of my life. So take us back to that <laughs> that horrible place. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But, I visit there frequently. <laughs> because it's so, it, it sounds like a TikTok video, right? Like it was awful mm -hmm. and then it was great. But I know that it didn't take a few seconds. What was no. that process of trying to piece back all these horrible things and difficult things from that realization to how you live now? It was honestly the, it was just eating the ego and saying, okay, the way that I pictured my life to be, it's not going to be like that. It doesn't mean that it's going to be awful. It doesn't mean that I have to live in this hot mess all the time where my children, you know, where there's just Cheerios all over the place and there's scribbling on the wall and I can't find anything in my pantry and my husband's a slop. Like that's not what we shift to. We shift to something that's different. We cater, we structure our homes to what we need. So it was understanding how my children think and saying, okay, my son who is ADHD, uh, you know, clinically ADHD, he is in the second percentile of being able to organize. Okay, so how am I, am I going to teach him how to get organized? And my, my Asperger's daughter... Um, my Aspie, she's in the 50th percentile of organization. And so even though they both have deficits, they both learn in different ways. They both struggle with it, but they both have other strengths too. And so it was just eating my ego and saying, okay, you know what? I'm never going to live in a showroom um, for as awesome as that could be. It also sounds really awful to mm -hmm. try to maintain that while I'm living life. And so I really got a practical sense. I had to I had to embrace the practical and let go of the perfection. 
and say practical beats perfection any day of the week. And so it was it was shifting. I totally had a mental shift of what organization was because marketing, Pinterest, Instagram, they all tell me that being organized looks like this. And it's beautiful and it's mm-hmm. whitewashed and it's, you know, $5,000 of bins just in the pantry, which can be fun and it can be a practical solution. But to me, organization meant, do you know what you have? Can you find it when you're looking for it? And can everybody put it away quickly when the time comes to do it? Mm-hmm. And that's what organization meant to me. And that's how I had to shift. And then it was like, oh, 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 I can do that. I got that. <laughs> right. So it was just the, you know, how how do I have the ability to let go of what, of what Black Friday tells me organization looks like and dig into what actual organization is and the practicality of it for my situation in my home with my family. And that's why professional organizers exist is because not everybody can do what Khloe Kardashian just did to her pantry Oh, and for um, people because who don't that's know, not practical. yeah, it is <laughs> the definition of like perfectly organized cookies in glass jars, like out of the oh original packaging, like things that mm-hmm. I think a lot of people say, well, wouldn't it be nice, dot, dot, dot. But you're suggesting like a radical rethink of even what we should be aiming for. Absolutely. So when you were coming to accept this, like, you know, new reality, and I love that you say, can I, you know, do I know what I have? Can I find it when I need it? And can uh-huh. I put it away when it's yeah. done? That's so great. Were your kids on board? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay, that was In a fact, dumb question. I, I shouldn't <laughs> have said, were your kids on board? Because I'm just thinking about my kids on board. <laughs> How did you get your kids on board? <laughs> So Caesar Milan, who's the guy that does all the dog training, he taught me a, a great lesson. He said, I don't train the dog. I train the dog owner. My my oldest son, who's super ADHD, he's also OCD, DMDD, ODD, SPD, SCT. Like he's my alphabet soup. And yeah, I those are a lot of one letters. Day. I, I, knew, I only know a couple yeah. of them, but for our purposes right. here, <laughs> it's just meaning that he's got a lot of things that maybe a neurotypical yeah. kid doesn't have to deal with. Exactly, exactly. So he's he's the one that overthinks everything. He's the he's his own walking trigger. And for as much as I tried to help him, one day I I said, you know, I can tell that his room is really bugging him. So I cleaned his room while he was at school and I threw away some things that were very precious to him. And a neurotypical kid might feel insulted. Uh, you know, they might feel like that trust was broken, but for my son, Uh, it pushed him into a six-week-long panic attack. And I decided, okay, I don't need to train my children. I need to train myself how to let go of certain boundaries and expectations and do what's realistic for them. And so in the after this six-week-long panic attack that was just living hell, Mm -hmm. um, it was how am I going to shift my perspective and my ability to teach them? And so I'm actually, I, I've got a course coming out about how to teach your kids how to declutter without breaking that trust. Hmm. Because it took me two years between when I did that until I got to the point of my son came to me one morning, almost exactly two years later. And he said, mom, my room is a mess. Will you help me clean it after school? <gasps> Wow. What? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and it was, it really was learning how to detach myself from the emotion of stuff so that I can love mm. on him rather than dumping all my emotions into his things. And so it, when I allowed him to take charge of his own room and his own space and to say, look, this looks like garbage to me. What does it mean to you? Mm-hmm. And whatever his answer is now, knowing I am still the mom and I set the parameters, I set the boundaries. But within those boundaries, boundaries and parameters, let them make all those decisions. So um, I I learned, how do I set boundaries and parameters? I did things like I color-coded them. 
So each of them has the same color, a uh, different color towel. Um, and that t- color towel also matches their bed sheets, their uh, mug in the in the kitchen, and their lunchbox and their backpack. So that it's never an argument of whose towel is this? Who left it on the floor? <laughs> it's like, whoa, there's a purple towel on the floor. And then that child knows, oh, that's mine because it's purple. So those were some of the boundaries and parameters I set up to help them to remove the emotion from the task because instead of me ranting and raving, you guys never put your towels away. This house is always a design. Rah, 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 kaboom. Yeah. And then they're defensive. And then there's this ugly dynamic within the home. So if I put those, the, those structures in place, then it's really easy for me to remain emotionless and say, there is a purple towel on the floor. That is zero emotion. Mm -hmm. And then they can take responsibility for it. But by doing that, by removing the emotion from the stuff, I now have the emotion to invest in my children and in their nurturing and their growing. And they see that. So when things change and we change from seasons, kids grow, we bring home friends, we we have, you know, we, we get a new vehicle. And so it's different. We have to store different things in the vehicle. Any kind of transition like that is really fun for me because then I get to (laughs) play organizer. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm only laughing solution. Because my kids and my friends make fun of me for my love of systems. (laughs) They're like, oh, did you make a new system for that? And I'm like, did did you come up with that on your own? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It is a new opportunity though to like lean into the change of life. So much of change is out of our control and you can have a certain amount of control over how you it, it it organize it and not just your stuff but like even mentally in your life like I'm going to organize it this way and if it's not working I'm going to reorganize it (laughs) did you have a hard time getting your husband on board with all of this or does he love systems? No, we just had to learn each other's styles. So he is the stasher. He likes to just put things away so that he doesn't see it. But I'm the piler. So I organize from the inside out. And if I know that I have a pile, that means I haven't gotten there yet. And those things need a home. So he kept stashing and I kept piling. Um, but he's very much a uh, a minimalist in the sense that he's he's really good with processing his own stuff and mm-hmm. getting rid of stuff that doesn't hold um, that he doesn't need. So he definitely has his hobbies and likes to collect a lot of things with those hobbies. But we just make sure that there are limits. And he actually set limits and boundaries on himself. He says, you know what? I'm going to have one hobby per season. So, oh, great. you know, in the winter, it's snowboarding or snow biking. In the summer, it's this and that and the other. So he has his piles of his different hobbies, but they're very limited. And I said, you know what? That's a good tactic and technique to teach anybody um, is... Just, just putting limits on what you can do so that you can enjoy what you've got to the fullest. If you've got 15 things that you're trying to do in one space, chances are you might be doing one of them just kind of halfway because yeah. you're so overwhelmed by what's in the space. So he taught me that lesson really well. So you to mentioned... To be able to limit yourself. So you mentioned stasher, piler. Are there other types of people that I wasn't aware of? Um, like systems No, or? it just... Yeah, I mean, you've got the people who just... They don't care that they live in, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, what I would consider mess. And that's fine because your house, your stuff tells a story. And who am I to tell you that your story is wrong? So I always say it's not a problem unless it's a problem. So if you like the way that you live, I don't care. Great. More power to you because that makes you confident. So it's kind of like the the artistic people. They have to be able to ha- live in the mess in order to see what they can create. They have to be able to see all of the things. Other people, they cannot think unless everything is bare and plain. And then you can create and then you can think. Um, So a lot of people are are very, very different. There are some organizers out there that try to quantify or qualify that. To me, it's just independent. What, What do you do? Do you like to see your stuff? Then don't hide it. Then you know. Then you get clear bins, and we try to make it beautiful in a way that you can see it. If you don't want to see your stuff, then we have to be able to make it make sense to you, so that it's not out of sight, out of mind, and you know where you can find it. And you know we label it all, and that kind of stuff. So it's just uh, pay attention to how you naturally tend to put things away, or if you need to see things, um, and that will help you determine how you set up the structure in your home to maintain that organization. That's a great tip. Uh, Lastly, is there anything 
that you see people doing that just <laughs> personally just rubs you the wrong way? Like, no, they're, the, you should, everyone should Don't. do th- this. <laughs> Stop doing that. You know, like, is there anything like that? That like, what's your thing? Everyone's got do their you thing. you really want my answer to that? Because uh, it's going to make everybody go, oh. Yeah, what's your thing? Stop thinking that bins are going to get you organized. <laughs> Stop it. Don't I go to the container store. Don't bin. go to Target. Knock How it off. Dare Empty you. everything that you have in your Amazon shopping cart. Stop it right now. But they have new ones that are clear for silver <laughs> cereal. So you don't have the box or the bag and then the, it's it's it seals in I the don't flavor care. and then you I can don't write care. the co- oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you, people just get it backwards. Yeah. And and again, a lot of it has to do with marketing and the way that we see things. Bins are to support are, are a structure to support a system. Bins do not get you organized. Bins support organization. So <laughs> stop with the bins and get decluttered. You have to get decluttered and you have to understand how a system works in your home. Do a step-by-step process. If, if Okay, if I go to the kitchen and I need to make dinner, what's the step-by-step process? Where do I go? Where do I touch? Do I open 15 different drawers in order to pull out what I need? Or can I make a one-stop shop? If I stand here in this spot in my kitchen, can I reach everything that I need to? Or can I eliminate 15 steps down to five steps? Create a system. Get rid of all the extra, all the superfluous. You have to get decluttered. And then create a system of how you actually use your stuff. And then, and then at the very end, at the very end, you can go to the (laughs) store and buy bins to create structure around your system. It's your reward. Stop it with the target runs. Stop it. I love it. I love your passion. And I salute you in your love of systems. I'm going to get on board with the bins, but it's going to take a while. She's a hard (laughs) habit to break. (laughs) It's not okay. (laughs) The Lisa Show is a production of BYU Radio. This week's show was produced by me, Lisa Valentine Clark, and McKay Menden, with help from Michael Combs and Maggie Faulkner. If you like the show, please leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify so we can reach new listeners just like you. Next week on the show... Dude, they love it and they have things that they tell over and over. And What are their favorite, like, weird. funny stories? I mean, the funny ones are, again, they're always horrible ones, like how Ben cut up the couch with a razor blade. Oh, oh. Uh, I forgot When he was that. three. And then later, again, I'm just thinking, fast forward 16 years, and he would be lighting a couch on fire, and the police would be calling me. Oh, yeah, he lit that couch on fire. I mean, (laughs) it has a kind of symmetry. That's next week on The Lisa Show. 